Decisions, decisions, decisions. <laughs> so it's decision day 2024, a few days away. And I have to say this US election is like one of the most crazy roller coaster ride of an election that I've ever seen in my lifetime. I think, you know, every night you can come home, it's like a reality TV show. It, it's almost like all the reality show you can think of would describe this election. It's like pop the balloon. It's like Real Housewife of, of Atlanta. It's like, you know, The Bachelorette. It's just like off the chain. This is how I feel about the US election. And so on Tuesday, Americans will be deciding on the president that's going to lead the United States of America for the next four years. So in today's video, I want to talk about um, from a Caribbean perspective. From us in the Caribbean, which president, whether it's um, Donald Trump or it's um, Kamala Harris, which one of these leaders would be best for the Caribbean, not for America? You know, Americans, we in the Caribbean that we're not American citizens, we don't get to choose, we don't get to vote, we just get to sit in our islands, wherever we are in the world, and just watch the drama unfold while Americans get to choose. But I'm sure sitting in the Caribbean, people have a preference who they would want to see as a president and who they think is better, is a better United States president for the Caribbean. So that is what I want to talk about today. Which president, Biden or Harris, would be better for the Caribbean? Let's talk about it. Yes, so as I said, Caribbean nationals all across the Caribbean sitting down, watching what's unfolding in America, and a lot of people have their preference of who they would like to see the next be the next president of the United States of America. And this video, I would like to be an interactive video, so please leave whatever island you represent in the comment section and the president that you'd want to see represent the United States of America and that Caribbean nationals, Caribbean leaders would have to deal with. What is your preference? Leave it in the comment section. Leave your flag of your island and the president that you would want to represent the United States of America going forward. The United States of America um, and the Caribbean, we are very close, like geographically very close. And over the past, I would say 120 years, the Caribbean, we have had like this love-hate relationship with the United States of America. If you go anywhere in the Caribbean and you talk to people on the street, uh, depending on who you're talking with, some people just love the United States of America, and then some people don't care much about the United States of America. So we have had this really this love-hate relationship. And as I said, it, it, went, it, it goes back as far as about... 120 years ago if we go back in history with when the united states of america relationship with the caribbean pretty much started you could go back to probably 1904 and that was when the first occupation of cuba by the united states of america took place and america occupied cuba on two different occasions between 1904 to the, 19, the, the, the late 1950s when Fidel Castro and the, the Cuban Revolution. So if you talk to historians, people will tell you that the relationship that started with that occupation of Cuba was people considered to be an illegal occupation of that, that island after the Cuban Revolution when Cuba fought for their freedom from the, the Spanish government and the Americans came in and occupied. So that was one of the first instance of where this love-hate relationship with the Caribbean started. And then from 1915 to the mid-1930s, 1934, we saw another occupation where Cuba, where, where the, the United States occupied Haiti, which if you talk to historians in Haiti and People all over the Caribbean, historians all over the Caribbean, they will tell you that 
that was an illegal occupation to go into Haiti and to occupy that country and for most for a lot of historians believe that America also played a role in the destabilization of Haiti to what it is today so that is just like two cases of illegal occupation and why people in the Caribbean are looking at the US the United States of America they have their preference of who they would want to see being the leader going forward and one of the the thing that is interesting is that the last president that Caribbean nationals overwhelmingly supported and wanted to to, to become the president was when President Obama uh, ran President Obama restored some US Cuba relationship I think he did it in his second term when there was like visa restriction that was lifted from the United States going to Cuba in particular for Cuban immigrants in the United States to be able to go back to Cuba and to be able to send remittance to Cuba so some there was some things that were was lifted at the time but unfortunately the Guantanamo Bay agenda did not come through as Obama was not able to fulfill that part of removing the Guantanamo Bay prison from Cuba. Unfortunately, when Donald Trump won in 2016, he pretty much overturned some of the work that Barack Obama did with Cuba. So today now, people are, are, are wondering, is Vice President Harris a better choice for the Caribbean, in particular when we look at Cuba and Haiti, than a Donald Trump would be. But one of the setbacks that we saw in recent time is that with the Biden administration having the power and the ability to move forward with what Obama started, is that at the recent um, UN assembly that the United States and Israel were the only two countries in the world that voted to keep this embargo going. And that is very important to note because Joe Biden, the president of the United States of America, had the opportunity to carry out or to fulfill what Obama started and to vote to lift the embargo. But he voted to, for the embargo to stay. And we all know that an American vote is pretty much um, an, an Israel vote. So like Israel is not going to vote to lift the embargo if America vote to keep it. And what is very important to know too is that Ukraine also voted for the, for the embargo to be, to be lifted. So we still have an embargo after over 62 years, Cuba is still under an embargo and Haiti is still in turmoil. So who, which American president going forward in this election cycle do you think is better for the Caribbean? Do you think, as I said, Donald Trump or do you think Vice President Kamala Harris? Who would be the best president going forward? And this is a very, you know, important question for the Caribbean because as I said, there have been, we have this love hate relationship with the United States of America we saw the U.S. invasion of Grenada in 1983 with the assassination of Morris Bishop, which if you ask people within the Caribbean, within Grenada, people will still th tell you that they think that this was an attempt to destabilize the, the, the country. And after that, we saw in 1989 in Panama, when the United States invaded Panama, to get rid of um, Noriega and also that is that people from that time period will tell you that that pretty much seemed like a reach like to go into to invade a country to go in and to move its leader um, that people still think that okay like that was even if you it was wanted in America you know, people still believe that this was something that was not a, a good look for the American government to do. 
and we we have heard speculations of of the the, C, the, the CIA in Jamaica in the 19 June 1980 election and elections after that when the Manly government was in office and that they were really watching that relationship between Fidel Castro and the Manly government in Jamaica. So that is just a brief history of just some of the up and down relationship that the Caribbean that we have had with the United States of America. So when an election is taking place in America, it just seems like it's not only for American, but especially in the Caribbean, like people are nervous as to who would win the election and which leader as America like to say, leader of the free world, who is going to be the best leader of the free world that the Caribbean leaders could have a good relationship with, that they can sit down and talk about what is happening, about what's going on in Cuba, about what is going on in Haiti, because the Caribbean leaders now are growing frustrated of what is happening in Cuba and what is happening in Haiti, because a strong Cuba and a strong Haiti is better for a stronger Caribbean. So guys, sound off, as I said, sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Who do you think is better to be leader of the free world, especially the Caribbean being so close to the United States of America? Do you say President Trump or President Harris? Sound off in the comment section and let me know <laughs> what you think. Who do you want to be wake up on Wednesday morning and hear that, okay, this is the person that's going to lead the free world going forward. Let me know. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more amazing content. And remember, peace. I'm out.